As we gather together this morning, I know that some of you have received the email that was sent out. Some of you may not have known or heard, but we experience a profound loss in our church community today. Um, I'm going to put a picture up just so that everybody knows whom I'm speaking of. This is Psalm High. Um, Psalm High passed away on Friday morning. It was unexpected. We do not have the, the cause of death. We don't know yet. There is work being done by the folks at the medical examiner's office. What I do want to do, and there's something that we normally do here is that we do a, a stand and recognize a moment of silence. I'm just gonna be very blunt with all of you today. This is one of those experiences that is not as it should be. Okay? Children should not pass away, and particularly in sudden ways that have yet to be able to be explained. So today's service is Trinity Sunday. It may flow together, it might not. It just is going to be what it is, okay? And I know that you understand that. But what I'm going to ask for right now is prayers for Maman, her husband, Mark, Tom P, the entire family. Um, I'm also going to ask you to hold in prayer the Myanmar community. It is a very tight-knit community, and uh, this is certainly the kind of situation that can rock any community at the best of times. And this is one of those instances where the family will certainly need us to be lifting them up in prayer. Um, once we get a little more information that is appropriate to share, we certainly will do so. We don't know about memorial service in time. We don't know any of that information yet. As soon as we know it, we'll email it out to the congregation and we'll try to get that information out uh, as quickly as we possibly can. So for the time being, please continue to hold uh, the family in your prayers, the Myanmar community, our church community, the family and the friends at school, all of those who are touched by some highs passing. So let's stand as we recognize the moment of silence.
loving God, whether we live or die, we know we are in your care. And we pray this day that you would receive the soul of Samhai into your beloved arms. And for those who are here in this world who are challenging the things that they know and that they believe, challenging all of their feelings, their emotions, all of that which is swirling around at this time, we pray that you would offer a sense of comfort and a sense of peace. Would you be with Maman's family and friends, the Myanmar community as a whole, the LABC family, school family, neighborhood family, all of those who are trying to come to terms with this terrible loss. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I'm just going to do our good mornings this morning as we continue on. <laughs> All right, come on. Hey. Uh, oh, no. I know. If, if looks, if looks. Oh, I, I know. I'm sorry. I, I, I almost messed things up. Here you go. <laughs> Thank you. Oh boy, I almost really messed things up today. Oh, am I ever glad I didn't mess that up. Thank you very much for doing that, Kenji. A couple of announcements. If you don't have a name tag yet, we certainly will get those made for you, but they're at the back. They're by first name, although I've discovered that some of you, when you put them back, like to use sort of a place and hope you can find it next week approach. Um, you are welcome to continue to do that. And if for some reason you take it home, you lose it, let me know. I will give you incredible amounts of grief, and then I will go and I will make you another one. Becca is having her ordination on Sunday, June 9th at 3 p.m. at 3rd Presbyterian Church. She hasn't done it yet. She hasn't done it yet. Hold the applause until she is ordained. And then everybody around here will call you reverend. That is uh, June, Sunday, June 9th at uh, 3 p.m. at 3rd Presbyterian Church. Please plan to be there. Um, you want them to RSVP? Is that... Helpful. It's helpful. Okay, so you can RSVP for food. For, food. Oh, for, for food. Oh yeah, this group. Okay, so <laughs> you can either RSVP to this number or the email, and uh, this there are cards like this uh, back there at the uh, entrance to the sanctuary. So please plan to fill that out if possible. The other thing I wanted to mention: next week is Becca's last Sunday with us, and Yay. I know, I know, I know. And normally, as Baptists, we would have a congregational vote to uh, agree to, to, but we apparently that doesn't work with a Presbyterian. Yeah. Um, and uh, so please plan to be here with us. There will be cake, and uh, it'll be a time of great celebration to thank Becca for her time here with us and the ways in which she has made us a better church community. So. Isn't that the wrong date? No. This is May 26th. Yeah. That's the slide just telling us what day it is. <laughs> so yes, that slide is right because it's today. Yeah, next week. But that slide has nothing to do with that. No, that's the slide that's telling us. Thank you. Just clarity. Thanks, Susan. Just come, just come here next week. Don't worry about that. Just come here next week. There, yeah, there will be cake next week, okay? That's all I can promise you. Oh, some days the wheels fall off the bus before it even gets moving. All right, folks. I think that's all the announcements I have. Good. Yeah. Oh, movie. Next uh, Saturday night, June 1st at 6 p.m., and that's in Classroom 1 in the conference room. If you have any questions about that, please chat with Chuck. If anybody knows anything about making fried bread. If anyone knows anything about making fried bread? Fried bread? Fried bread? I invite you to turn with me now for our responsive <laughs> call to worship this morning. Who is like our God in glory and strength? The voice of the Lord thunders over the waters. Who is like the Lord in power and might? The voice of God breaks the mighty cedars. Who is the, like the Holy One in awe and wonder? 
The voice of the Almighty shakes the wilderness. God sits enthroned forever. Worship God in holy splendor. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let us pray together. Your spirit calls us here, O God, to behold the glory of your majesty and power. For adopting us into your family and making us heirs with Christ, we thank you. For freeing us from the failings of the world, that we may be born anew by your spirit, we praise you. In all things, we give you thanks. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together our opening hymn, Immortal, Invisible. The words are in English, Burmese, and French in your order of service. true self from our Lord because guess what 
God knows what's really going on in there anyway. So it's kind of a, an illusion on your part to think that you're hiding anything from God anyway. So if you're angry, just be angry. And I know. This is not supposed to happen right like this. This is not good timing. Right? This is not good timing. This isn't supposed to happen to kids. Um, and I don't have any good answers to anything. And that is also not something that you hear often from the pulpit. Right? That I don't know what happened. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. Right? It, but it is what it is. But there are a few things about which I am supremely confident. Number one, thank you, Chuck. As frustrated and irritated with God as I have been in the last 48 hours, I have felt God's presence keenly. From the moment I got that first text until this very moment, I have felt the Holy Spirit very deeply, very strongly, even as I ask, why, why, what's happening? Seriously, seriously. Um, And the good thing is that as hard as we may try to turn away from God, it never works. <laughs> Sometimes you hear people say, oh, I've turned from God, I've, I've turned my back on God, I'm not, you know. That may be true, but in some ways that's sort of, it's also kind of a delusion. We can turn away from God, but God is always with us. Um, God is always watching us. God always has God's hand of protection on us. And so if we think that we are powerful enough to run away from God, we are giving ourselves way too much credit. And if we think that we are too angry and that, that God will be unhappy with us for being angry, we're also giving ourselves too much credit. Okay? So, I've been spending a lot of time in Ecclesiastes, and Lamentations, and the Psalms, because those are three good books of the Bible to go to when you are upset with God, and that's why they're in the Bible. Right? There's a, there's a verse for every occasion. There's, a, um, there's the right passage for every moment. And so I've been sort of reading and rereading those passages. One of the ones that I keep going back to and keeps sort of sticking with me is Ecclesiastes 11.5. Just as you do not know how the spirit comes to the bones in the mother's womb, so you do not know the work of God who makes everything. There is enormous mystery wrapped up in our faith. There is so much that we don't understand about what happens in life and in death. And uh, if you meet anyone who says that they understand any of it, they're probably full of nonsense and you should run away from that person very quickly because they're trying to scam you. Mm -hmm. Just as you do not know how the breath comes to the bones in the mother's womb, so you do not know the work of God who makes everything. My goal for this week and the weeks to come 
is to live comfortably in the mystery of this child's death. And that is a very strange thing to say. But I don't know what else to do, right? So for all of you, whether you knew this kid or you didn't, I could wax philosophical about this child for a long time, but I won't. But whether you knew this child or not, I encourage you to really live comfortably into that mystery. To me, living comfortably in the mystery of a tragedy means continuing to feel God's spirit, not holding back on any emotion that I feel at any given moment, leaning entirely on the promises that I have read about and that I have seen in my own life and in the life of others. I am not good with not knowing things. I don't like to be involved, I don't like to be wrapped in mystery, ever. It's a control issue. Who does? But I'm worse than most people. I'm very type A. So, with this child's death and with all this, I encourage you, this week and every week, find ways to live and rest comfortably in the mystery that is our Lord, to be okay with not having answers, but to figure out ways to tap into the presence of God at every moment that we wake and that we sleep. I know God is with me. I know God is with all of us at every moment, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We know that blessed are those who mourn, right? It will get better eventually, and things will become clear in time, or not. But part of our walk of faith is resting comfortably in the mystery. In life and in death, we are the Lord's. Amen. Amen. in your prayers. This is a difficult task for any of us to deal with death, but it's equally, if not more, difficult to walk through that journey with children who are particularly close with Samhai. So please hold them in your prayers. Just like Becca putting aside a scripture, um, if you want to see what it looks like for ministers to just kind of throw caution to the wind, we're not even going to read the second one because it's going to be irrelevant. You'll see it. Uh, not relevant in general, but relevant for the sermon. Yeah, I read it sometime. It's a goodie. All right, let us continue then with our time of worship as we receive our morning offerings today. It's an opportunity for us as individuals.
to give back a portion of those things first given to us. And so we'll receive our morning tithes and offerings this day.
Let us give thanks. Loving God, we thank you for the gifts that you've given to us. We thank you for the ministries that you have called us to as people of faith here in this community. And we pray that you would bless these offerings today, that they would represent our desire to continue to serve you in this place and beyond. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. As Susan makes her way up here, we've got a couple of prayer requests. One I want to apologize. Came in last week that uh, it, we didn't get to it. Uh, from Jackie. She says, please pray for those uh, living with, the, uh, with drug abuse and the lives that they impact. And also this week, Jackie asks, and you're going to have to translate for me, Jackie. Um, okay. All who have served in the military and, ser and who are serving and the family members who have lived lives impacted. impacted by transitions of military life. Thank you, Jackie. That's impacted? Well, I'm not sure. I don't remember what I put there. That's, o that's okay. All right. Well, thank you, Jackie, and thank you for translating. We also... Um, Susan and I talked about this last night. We're going to pass the, the microphone today for people who wish to uh, offer any prayer requests. The only thing I, that I do ask is if you want to offer a prayer request for somebody else, please make sure that you have permission to do so before we share publicly things that maybe should have been kept private, at least at that point in people's lives. So that's just a little kind of caveat. And also because it's recorded, we want to be respectful of that too. So any prayer celebrations and or concerns today? Now we got yours. We okay. They're a chatty bunch. Here you go. <laughs> Today we've heard the sad news of our son Kwe's sudden death and have prayed earnestly in sorrow for comfort for her mom, her dad, uncle, and brother. These prayers and blessings will continue in the following weeks and we're so thankful for Becca and her words to us, which help us to know the mystery of God, not understand, but know the mystery of God. But today we also have other prayer concerns that we bring to the Lord, prayers of joy and prayers of sorrow. And my prayer is for my granddaughter and her husband who reached who received their masters of mental health uh, last saturday a week ago and the family our family was all able to be there so that was a joyful occasion and a very culmination of lots of hard work holy christ we pray for comfort for this congregation and the Burmese fellowship as we experience a week of deep sorrow and questions. We pray for our community to gather around each other in love and action. We pray for those who have recently graduated. We're so proud of their accomplishments and wish them joy and fruition of their next steps in life. We pray for our school children who are approaching the end of the school year. May they have a delightful and fun-filled summer. And may their teachers help them to understand this tragedy that our church is facing. We pray for those who are lonely, who are fighting addiction, those who are struggling with life's challenges. Be with each person, giving them hope and creativity and life. Today we especially pray for peace. Peace in Burma. Peace between Israel, uh, Israel and, and Hamas, Hamas, Ukraine and other war-torn places. As Americans, we pray for our country. We ask for curiosity about people with whom we, we disagree with. Perhaps with understanding and communication, we will find we aren't so wide apart as we fear. Help us to be generous and loving with those who appear to be 
on another side. May we remember to pray continually with all our love and all our comforting and all our hope. In your holy name, we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We invite you to sing together. Uh, in Christ there is no east or west. Please sing it. Sunday. And that was a Sunday when we stood up here as pastors and said, even though we know that it happened, we, we can't explain it. We don't understand. And then just last Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, the day when the tongues of fire and the different voices that everybody understood one another and we said it happened, but we don't understand it. Today is Trinity Sunday, and if I were going to preach a standard Trinity Sunday sermon, it would go something like this, the God the Creator, Christ the Redeemer, the Holy Spirit the Sustainer, and they, they're all three in one, and one in three, and somehow they all have distinct purposes and different roles, and they all function in different ways at different times, but ultimately... I know that it exists, but I don't know how to understand it. As Becca said just a, a short while ago, we're dealing with a tragedy in our church, and I'm not going to stand up here and preach a standard Trinity Sunday sermon. I'm just not going to. Um, because I don't think that's where our hearts are. I don't think that's where our minds are. I don't think that's what we need to do as a church community right now. But what I'm going to say is, this tragedy is something that has happened, but I don't understand it. And I'm not going to stand up here and say, you know, try to explain it one way or another, because the reality is I don't understand it myself, and I grieve alongside Beck and alongside each of you, alongside Songhai's family and friends and church community. So I'm not, I'm not going to try to give some explanation for something that I'm trying to rationalize and, and understand myself. What I am going to do is I'm going to say to you the things that I said on Friday night. So what happened was Songhai passed away late morning on Friday. Okay? 
And from that point on, a number of people came to be with the family at the hospital. And then after things uh, kind of wrapped up at home, it was an opportunity for them to go back to their house. And interestingly enough, they ran into at their home, uh, Kadin and So Win, who were able to embrace them as they returned back home without their dog. At that point in the Myanmar community, what happens is people stay with the family from the point of somebody's passing, whether young or old, all the way through until the funeral and the burial. And again, we don't know when that's going to take place. Saturday. We, it's what? Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. We do know when it's going to take place. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Saturday. Thank you, Kaden. Um, so there'll be people there all week. Okay. And in typical Myanmar fashion, food appeared. I don't know how. I know Kadin was involved, so it shouldn't surprise anybody. But there was incredible amounts of food and community there. And there was a prayer service. And I was asked to offer a word of encouragement. You have no idea how hard it is to offer a community encouragement when you've just spent time with them and the loss of their dog. One of the hardest things I've ever done. And I thought, what do I say? You know, you've got this group of people who are mourning together, sitting in this small room, and what do you say? And so, as I was actually driving there, wrestling with what do I say in this, this incident, this, this context, two things came to me. I'm going to say to you the same things I said to them, because perhaps it might be of some use to you this morning. I hope. I used two scriptures, which is why I didn't bother reading the ones in the bulletin. As Becca said, they were great Thursday. <laughs> Romans 14, verse 8. The apostle writes, If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. From the moment that Samhai was born into this world, she was under the care of the Lord. She was a child of God, and she lived as a child of God. Was she perfect? I suspect not. This is the little girl who every Sunday morning that I would go downstairs to preach and give communion would come up to me, look at me, and go, why are you here? <laughs> and I would say, because I'm preaching today. And she would go, okay, and she'd walk away. Every month, this child did this to me. Never quite understood why I was there. And then she started doing it up here. Now, I also suspect that some of you would know her by the smile on her face and the fact that whenever there was cake, she got to it first. Okay? I just remember a couple of weeks ago with cake, and she was walking through here with her cake and going and sitting down in the narthex. This was a child who was a caregiver of children younger than her just as she was cared for by those older than her. This was a child who participated in Sunday school. She would do downstairs, they do um, uh, kind of memory verses where the kids will come up and sometimes a lot faster than others, give their memory verse and say, God bless you all, and everybody would clap. She was up there. She was memorizing scripture. She was learning God's word. She was part of our Sunday school. She was a child of God from the moment she came into this world. She lived as a child of God. And in the moment that she left, she was a child of God, embraced by a God who loved her in life and will love her for eternity. Whether we live or die, we are in God's care. But, this still sucks. Because there are those who are left behind, family and friends from near and far, both in America, Rochester, uh, Oklahoma, Burma, Thailand, all over the place, who are trying to struggle and understand what has taken place. And it's not easily understandable. So the second scripture that I went to is one that we read at sermons, or at, at funerals, but I think this equally pertinent because this pain is real. Psalm 23, verse 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear nothing because you are with me. Meaning God. 
This is an incredibly dark valley. This is the darkest valley that I suspect this family has and may ever experience in their life. This is a dark valley for a family of church brothers and sisters. This is a dark valley for the broader Myanmar community, for the LABC community, for a school community, for a neighborhood community. This is a dark dark valley and I suspect some of you may know what they're going through you may have lost children you may have had to go through this pain yourself and regardless you've gone through dark valleys every single one of us have gone through some dark valley in our lives the word of hope here is that it says you will go through dark valleys it doesn't say that you're going to be uh, immune because you're a person of faith. All life is going to be happy-go-lucky and things are going to be great from the time of our birth to the time of our death and life is just going to be one giant ray of sunshine. It doesn't say that. It says even though when you go through these dark valleys, you have nothing to fear because God is with us. You have nothing to fear Scripture that says Psalm High is in the loving arms of the Lord. That might be the only thing that that family would have feared. Wondering where it is, where her soul has gone, where is she now that the body has passed? You have nothing to fear. But you will have pain to feel. You will have anger to experience. There are all of these different feelings that I'm sure are permeating the lives of all of those around us. Asking questions, why? Questions, anger, frustration, confusion. All of these and so many other feelings are real. Those are things that we will feel. But even though when we walk through the darkest valleys, even when we feel all of those things and so much more, this scripture reminds us that God is with us. God is present. God is real. God is there grieving with us. I can't fully understand things like the Ascension or Pentecost or even the Trinity Sunday. I can give explanations of what took place and I can offer some insights about what it means and how it impacts us and all of that kind of stuff. That's, that's the, the minister side. I can't understand all of it, nor can I understand why this little girl with so much of her life ahead of her has died. If I knew, if I could understand it, I would tell you because maybe that would offer some comfort. But even I am struggling right now trying to figure out what this all means and why it had to happen. There is a young girl in our community who died this week, and it should not be this way. It's not the way things should be. And I can't understand why, and I'm not going to give you some explanation, because I'm also alongside you struggling. I'm going to be frustrated, I'm going to be angry, and I'm going to be sad. But what I am going to do, similar to what Becca has said, is realize that there is this this gray area in our lives where we can't always wrap our heads around everything. But what I'm going to know, and it's going to provide me comfort, and maybe it'll provide you some comfort too, is that this little girl lived and died in Christ. She lived and died as a child of God. And that when the dark valleys appear, and there is a dark valley right now, we know that we can trust that even though we feel the pain we feel, the anger, the frustration, the confusion, fill in whatever word you need to use, God is with us. God is there in the darkness with us. And in time, God may help to shine some light into the pain that we all feel. Let's sing together. Um, We're going to sing together, Here I Am, Lord. Um, and my hope is, and, and it's, a, it's sometimes interesting when you plan a service, because this hymn was for Trinity Sunday, okay? Like this, 
this whole service was focused in a slightly different way. But I want to point out a couple of things in this hymn that stand out to me. The God who hears our cries. The God who is there extending a hand of Satan. The God who will make darkness bright. The one who will give a heart of love. Who bears the pain. Who weeps in love. Let's sing together. The first page is really the part of God, of, and is typically sung by a cantor. The choir will sing the first page, and the part of it, the refrain on the next page, the congregation will respond. Okay. <laughs> serve our God, even when we feel fearful 
we will go to serve the Lord. Who will go to serve our neighbors? Even when we feel unworthy, we will go to serve our sisters and our brothers. Who will go to serve our world? Even when we feel unprepared, we will go to serve God's people. We are your servants, Lord. Send us.